Jewish Judaism does not address the part of the verse that says, but we had regarded him diseased. Again, it has to be all Jews at one time. When were the Jews, even by the Gentiles, regarded as diseased? No, sure, you can you can be ugly and say nasty things and say, oh, the Jews is like a disease, but, you know, but they haven't been. This is not perceptions. This is not how people think about you. This is a description of a real man, God's representative, his prophet like Moses, that he prophesied in Deuteronomy. And we think that Orthodox knows about him. Now, how... how why is it so difficult? Why, why does everybody got to be sinners? Is it because you're religious? I think so. Well, God chose an atheist, a Gentile. The arid land in verse 2, that's Christianity. I mean, he comes from Adam. He comes from a Christian land. And of the Jews, no people are with him. It's so easy to figure out. See, the time is coming. The land blooms again. See, the time is coming. Jerusalem is rebuilt. Then I will make a covenant with you. Okay. Covenant is here. How do we know? Well, you got to have a spokesperson, don't you? God does. you got to have a prophet like Moses. Oh, yeah, Deuteronomy is going to send the guy back. wonder what he looks like. How do we identify him? Because I'm not going to believe anybody if I don't have a description. Hi, hey, hey, wait a minute. Here's a description. This is what the sages said. said, Moshiach, the anointed ones in chapter 11 will be described here. That's how we find him. Well, he's here. He's got to be here. The covenant's here. Let's find him. Uh, it's like y'all think he's going to come back to you for Judaism, out with Judaism. Like, like uh, uh, I, I, I heard somebody ask Tolia, God had me listen to it, on the radio, and somebody called in and said, how do we know Moshiach's here? Here's his answer. I'll throw up the window and look out and Torah will be written on every heart. Now you go to Jeremiah. The land blooms again. I, I don't know how you look at everybody. You can see Torah written on the heart. I guess everybody's going to synagogue. But... You return, I'll return, I'll put my sanctuary amongst you. Y'all sins forgiven. I know many of you, that won't matter a bit. I'm writing a, a scroll of remembrance for that day. Bring Elijah, he's going to try, he, he's going to, he's got the same purposes as the uh, righteous servant. So already, who is he? Well, we got, this is, this is what's unfulfilled. Four men to come, two prophecies, to, uh, covenants to come. David. At his arrival, God makes the grant of his friendship covenant. So that's with David. He needs to announce that. And Elijah is the messenger. What's he a messenger of? New covenant. Who's the only man taken to heaven? Elijah, specifically in the Hebrew Bible. And God sends him back. you got to ask yourself, why? Because he can talk to the angel. Right? Give me the covenant. Okay, I'm going to go announce it now. Where's the description of him? He's got the same purpose as the purpose of the man Isaiah 53. If it describes anybody, it's just going to describe Elijah by purpose. Far greater than it's going to, going to describe Jesus Christ. Then see the single verse except the last one. The one that says he's a sinner. There's so many lies by him in that book, New Testament. I've got, I've got a video on Doubt Me. Go look at it. Go look at what the verses really say. Go look at what happens when Jesus says, All oh, the prophets say of me, I'll ride this ass into Jerusalem, and the Gentiles will spit on me, mock me, scourge me, kill me, and I shall rise on the third day. All the prophets, huh? Well, I've got 20 in your Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, not one says that. No one ever says that anywhere, even in biblical scriptures, supposedly, that wasn't canonized. But there is one. Zechariah, I believe it's chapter 9, verses 9 and 10. It's definitely verses 9 and 10. The Messiah will ride an ass into Jerusalem, which just means he's humble. I'm going to go to Jerusalem, and I'm not riding an ass in to fulfill this verse, but I will be humble. God's making sure that as part of this process of being made suitable, where all those big, heinous words are listed, punished and chastised, not treatment. Taken from society, taken cut off from the land of the living is what it says. Well, so was so was Ezekiel. There used to be some conflict in the understanding in, in some of this, and I can straighten it out. 
Some of these verses by Ezekiel apply to the Assyrian Babylons. Some of them, and most of them, and the important ones that I'm going to be noting, apply to the Roman dispersal that has returned. And some of them apply to both. They can both, you know, what's being said can apply to the exiles and to the dispersal. Thus said the Lord God. This is Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 10 through 13. Thus said the Lord God. I'm going to deal with the shepherds. I will demand a reckoning of them for my flock, and I will dismiss them from tending the flock. The shepherds shall not tend themselves anymore. For I will rescue my flock from their mouths, and it shall not be their prey. Now remember, this is being written in antiquity. I mean, like that last uh, sentence. I will rescue my flock, this and that. And it shall not be their prey, as though all rabbis today are praying on. Well, that's not true. But what is true is they're to dismiss. Because this does not apply to the Assyrian Babylonian exiles. It can only apply, it can only apply to the Roman dispersal. For thus said the Lord God, here I am. I'm going to take thought for my flock, and I will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock. When some in his flock have gotten separated, so I will seek out my flock. I will take them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries. And I will bring them to their own land. And I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses and in all the settled portions of the land. Okay, that sounds like he's talking to the, the exiles. And possibly the dispersal at the same time, but he's not. Why? The northern kingdom was inhabited by Gentiles. The the settled portion would, would be not the wilderness. Uh, he, so this is a time in Israel when, when the entirety of the lands, what was once Judah and what was once Israel, uh, except for what the Palestinians have taken over in the West Bank and Gaza, um, uh, blooming in, and everybody's returned. And... There are Israelis, uh, both in what was the kingdom of Israel um, and in Judah. So that's applying to the dispersal. And what else? David's there. And he didn't appear. He does not appear when the exiles return. So that doesn't apply to them. It applies to today. See a time is coming, day of the Lord. The man of Isaiah 53 described, who is the descendant of David from chapter 11, that's God's representation. That's the person who tells the people, God says, Keith, tell them this. You know, just as he said, Moses, go tell the Israelites this. Go tell them this. Go tell them the book of Leviticus. Go tell them this and that. He's got to have a person. And we got one description. Four men coming, Elijah, prophet like Moses, David. That's what God calls him, the son of David. He didn't call him son of David. He just calls him a servant David. And, of course, the righteous servant himself. All four righteous servants, a description of one righteous servant who can handle the chores and the task that any of them will have to do. And I'll mention that in a minute. This is Ezekiel 34. Verses 23 through 30. Then I will appoint. So he has this reckoning and dismissal. Then I will appoint a single shepherd over them to tend them, my servant David. So the entirety of these, yeah, these two, I mean, it applies clearly to the Roman dispersal. It cannot apply to the exiles. There is no account of a descendant of David returning with the exiles. That, that comes up in Zechariah too. Supposedly the branch was going to come and build the second temple. Well, the branch never shows up. And, and it's, it's clear that the branch is supposedly the man of Isaiah 11, the 